views are fabulous. These, these mountains in the desert out here, there's just nothing else like it in state. To just be able to get out and not have to worry with traffic or phone calls or any other your life's problems, you get out in the, in the desert here on one of these mountain peaks, it's just, uh, wow, pretty neat. My name is Scott Lyric. I'm a wildlife biologist here at Elephant Mountain Wildlife Management Area. I'm very lucky to be able to not only work here, but also live here. And it's literally a chance of a lifetime for a wildlife biologist. I do just about anything that needs to be done, but also am responsible for conducting the baseline inventories on the property, which entails monitoring all the animal and plant life to the extent possible. And I prefer to work out here in this Chihuahuan desert country, and the view is certainly good. Over here we have a very interesting situation. We have a yucca that has been utilized by a loggerhead shrike. These horn lizards were impaled on the yucca by a uh, loggerhead shrike to either be eaten at that time or at a later date. And uh, these are round-tailed horn lizards. It's one of the three species of horn lizards we have in Texas. There's at least 17 on this plant here. It's the most I've ever seen a shrike use a, a particular plant. It's uh, kind of a gruesome habit, but uh, that's how they eat, is they impale their prey on a thorn so it will hold it still so they can consume it. Get these pups out of here. These are scaled quails. They're very common in West Texas, our most common species of quail. Um, these are two juveniles. Uh, we're gonna get some leg bands on them so we can do some, some survival studies. Some people call these blue quail. They do develop a bluish color. Uh, right now these mottled colors help them avoid predators, blend in a little bit. Get him secure here so he doesn't hurt himself or get away. We'll get a leg band on him. It's number 1119. A little bit of bird jewelry. We band these birds with a numbered leg band. Um, that way if we, we ever capture them again or if they're harvested by a hunter, we can find out the age of the bird where they've gone. Uh, he may be recaptured, uh, you know, anywhere from a couple hundred yards to a half mile or more from here. Literally caught this bird right here in my front yard. The office is a short walk away. The mountain is right here. It's a wonderful place to work. I actually sit on my front porch with my spot and scope and watch bighorns on the mountain uh, in the evenings. It's just wonderful. This is, this is great. This state's full of some amazing places, but this is my favorite spot, the, the mountains of the Trans-Pecos. And in Texas, that's the only spot you'll find bighorn sheep in their natural environment. Always just amazing about how uh, magnificent these animals are. They, uh, they make leaps and jumps that no other animals can do. They'll stand up there on the rocks and it's just, uh, it's an amazing sight. I wish everybody could see them. One of the different things we do in this part of the state is trap and transport desert bighorn into new habitats. The original herd of bighorns were brought here in 1987. We had 20 that were released here. And in the last few years, those numbers have reached over 100 animals. We're gonna get ready to transplant off Elephant Mountain to Black Gap Wildlife Management Area, about 45 sheep. Because of the help of organizations like Texas Bighorn Society, private landowners, 
many, many biologists that came before, before me, uh, the state of Nevada. We, we have more desert bighorn in Texas today than we did 100 years ago. It's been an incredible success story. The helicopter lands at the, at the headquarters with their load of sheep. And when the dust clears a little bit, volunteers equipped with goggles for sight, uh, eye protection rush up and unload the sheep from the helicopter. Well, that's a little ram there. The animals are brought to the processing stations, uh, examined by a biologist and a veterinarian. And as they are being processed, uh, temperatures are being taken the entire time. If it goes too high, it's a sign of stress. We're going to place radio transmitting collars on all the animals. Still going up, 1058. We're ready to go. Are they ready? This, this is outstanding. Well, we're real lucky in this fact that Black Gap is only a short distance away from Elephant Mountain. As the crow flies, it's a very short distance. However, the, the main route to drive there is, is about 120 miles. But the entire drive will take less than two and a half hours. So the sheep are not in the trailer very long. And we get to Black Gap and we're gonna go to the predetermined location where they'll be released and we're gonna turn the trailers around and open the gates. That's, that's outstanding to see see these sheep in a new range, get them reestablished down here again. This is fabulous. It's, this is the, one of the greatest things about wildlife management, and it really is a, it's, it's a good, good feeling for wildlife biologists to, to be involved in something like this. This is outstanding. Hopefully, even if you never get a chance to see them, you will have an, an appreciation for the fact that they are actually here again. We're doing the best we can to manage the habitat and the animals, wildlife species here at Elephant Mountain. And because of that, we, we see animals like the desert bighorn thriving here. Very lucky to be able to live and work on this property. It's, it's a wonderful place and it's literally a chance of a lifetime for a wildlife biologist.